How can you make an affordable home lab? Well, in this video, we're gonna dive into exactly how to do just that. And guess what? What we're gonna cover in this video will work whether you are on Windows or Mac. That being said, whenever I say Mac, I'm talking about the Intel chip Mac. If you are on the M1 Mac like I am, then you'll have to use Parallels, which is a different hypervisor from what we're going to be talking about in this video. That being said, if you would like a video about how to set up a home lab with Parallels, let me know down in the comments. Believe it or not, that experience is quite pleasant. As for the rest of you first, we're gonna make a decision between VMware or VirtualBox. And I've already made a video covering the differences between the two and really what I recommend for either stage that you're at. For this video, we're gonna use VMware. So you're gonna go to VMware.com and then you're gonna download the free version of the VMware Workstation Player. Once that is done downloading, go through the prompts on the installer. Personally, I like to keep this icon in my taskbar or on the desktop, but that is honestly, that's completely up to you. Once you've downloaded the VMware Player, it's now time to download a virtual machine. And we're gonna get started by downloading both a Kali Linux image and a Ubuntu image. And both of those images will basically give you nice little labs whether you're wanting to play with different offensive security tools and ethical hacking tools on Kali, or if you're wanting just a clean Linux installation in Ubuntu where you can really do anything that you want. For the Kali Linux image, you're gonna go to Kali.org and you're gonna download the Kali Linux image for VMware. And for the Ubuntu image, you're gonna go to Ubuntu.com and then download the Ubuntu desktop. Now this might take a minute to download. So while you're waiting, you can hit that like button and consider becoming a member of the channel. If you will become a stashed one, you will have exclusive emotes. And if you become an early bird, you will have early access to my content. Some of which might even be months in advance. In both levels, support producing free cybersecurity content via this channel. Now that those images are done downloading, you're going to go to the VMware player and you're gonna hit player, file, and then new virtual image. On the installer disk image, browse to where it is that you have downloaded your virtual machine image file, which will probably be in your downloads folder. Once you hit next, you'll need to create your user account. Then you're gonna hit next twice. And on the following screen, you can toggle how much space that your virtual image will have. If you're planning on doing a lot of work in this virtual machine, then you might wanna increase the amount of space that your VM will have. Once you're done with that, hit next, review the details of your virtual machine, and then hit finish. You're gonna repeat all of these steps for any other virtual machine that you want to download. Now there are some other settings that you should toggle before you hit the launch button that will really help impact not only the security of your testing environment, but also the performance of your virtual machine. First, click the VM and then hit VM settings. Hit the memory tab and then you'll be able to toggle the amount of RAM that your virtual machine is able to use. Bear in mind that this is severely limited by how many virtual machines you're looking to run it. So if you're looking to run four virtual machines, try to remember how much RAM that your computer has so that way you're not allocating more RAM than you actually have access to. Then hit the network adapter settings and this next part is incredibly important, especially if you're wanting to work in an ethical hacking lab. By default, it will be set to NAT, as in it will be using your host IP address and access to whatever Wi-Fi it's connected to to access the internet or other network resources. Now, if you're planning on practicing ethical hacking content or things like that, then you'll really probably want to switch this to host only, meaning that it cannot network with any other devices outside of your host. And yes, this may impact whether or not it has access to the internet, but that is a perfectly okay thing. Say you're trying to type in the target IP address and you mistype the number and it's no longer private 10 dot x ip address it is a 1.x ip address and then you just fire off the exploit if you are connected to the internet then you would be launching your payload against an ip address on the internet and that can be a huge problem people get into a lot of trouble for that so to protect yourself and to protect your home lab we're going to set it to host only so really you're only able to launch exploits on whatever target machine you have in your home lab once your settings are set up to your liking go ahead and close out of the settings and double tap the vm or hit launch now from the jump there will be some display settings that maybe you'll want to change and kind of toggle around so it's a more comfortable experience for you. But that's really the last step. From here, the world is your oyster. Now you have a free home lab, which is phenomenal. Now, if you want to spend a little bit of money and mess around with a Raspberry Pi, check out this video. And if you want to learn ethical hacking and aren't sure where to start, check out the review for this course right here. And this is really where I recommend that you would get started with that. With all that, I will see you all next time. Bye.